Welcome back. We're excited to have OG3 here with us. Um, this is a rare, rare treat, I know, because it's so hard often to get artists and their management here. What, what was it about Chris that kind of excited you and said, I gotta sign this kid, he's amazing? I mean, what excited me about Chris was really the enthusiasm from his mother. Like, his mother just, just behind him, you know what I mean? And it's nothing like having your mom behind you and the kid's bright. And like, I, like he mentioned about the game, like, I got him in coding school. I paid for him to go to coding school and then I seen what he wanted to do and I just pursued his career with him mm. behind him. I love that, that little component you just mentioned right there. So mm. you saw the gift in him yeah. and then you then said, okay, I'm going to pay for you to go to school to yeah. enhance that gift. Yes, yes. You have uh, some amazing paradoxes. I mean, OG, where does that come from? Because you're so young. <laughs> I mean, I'm 23, but I'm I'm the older brother of uh -huh. 10 kids on each side of the mm -hmm. family. Mm -hmm. And in my neighborhood, I was the youngest, like, doing it. You know what I'm saying? And nobody was, had the mind capacity to get up out that box because a lot of people just want to stay in the neighborhood. But I had to expand my mind and my mentality just moving forward. And I was the youngest, oldest, you get what I'm saying? Mm, okay. So I took on the OG role from being the, the big dog like uh, of the neighborhood and for my brothers. Yeah. So let's talk about that. I mean, growing up in Baton Rouge, it definitely um, was complicated. What do you think set you apart? I know your mom was with you for a bit, and then you guys kind of got reunited. Yeah. There's definitely been um, a lot of challenges. And how did you overcome it? I mean, growing up in Baton Rouge, I overcame it because everybody is strictly on one thing and I had to expand and I always wanted to do better and great. So just me not want to be on the same page as everybody. So me want to grasp and go higher and reach higher skyscrapers, you know what I'm saying? People want buildings, I want skyscrapers. So it's just like, that's what I wanted to do. Have you always been that way? I always been that way from my grandmother and my grandfather because they, they raised me. I went to Catholic school. I'm spiritually inclined. I'm physically, mentally. It's just like I had that rear from my grandmother and grandfather. So I always had it. So it's just the Lord. And kids often are going to be, you know, bad at getting in trouble. Was there a little bit of that? And if so, like, how did you really sort of change out of that life? Because, you know, we know that earlier on the image was a little bit different. Yeah. I mean, trouble everywhere, but it's just like me being in trouble and me knowing what's the consequences behind it made me want to elevate. And I've seen a lot of people like trouble. See, it's, it's different because certain kids like trouble, and I didn't want to steer trouble in people's mind. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I switched to the positivity in it, and that's where I came from. So it's just like I wanted to change everybody's mind from the negative to the positive because we can't make a career being negative. You get what I'm saying? We can't make it nowhere. So I always was on that positive route, and I always wanted to expand my people. How important is your circle for you? My, my circle is very important to me because like all my people look up to me. So when you have everybody looking up, I got to make sure when they look up, they looking up to something. So it's very important to me and I, I, I genuinely love all my people and I know all my brothers is always with me and they fully focus with me and behind me no matter what. What's that circle look like for you? Is it a big circle, a tight circle? Like how many people's in your actual, your circle? My circle is very big because I have a big family and I have a lot of brothers and one of my brothers had nine kids himself and he only 21, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So it's just like my family tree and my circle is very big. So I always had to make a statement so everybody want to do better. You and your brother have always been really, really close. How do you feel um, you can sort of best help him now and potentially even get him out of, of Baton Rouge? Because it seems like that city presents such a challenge. It seems like there's a lot of, lot of hatred and a lot of people trying to get back. I mean, I could potentially help him by taking his mind off the focus of the neighborhood because, like I say, it's like, all my brothers love the, the neighborhood for some reason. So it's just like taking his mind off, off the negative stuff that he can get into and feed into. Like, it's a lot of BS you can get into, you know what I'm saying? And my brother, like, you can't tell him nothing. Like, if, if somebody come in front of him, it's just like he'll react because he not, he don't want to feel like, uh, you know, he don't want to feel belittled. Right. And he, he got a hold of it. So I would just really change his mind. But that's 
easier said than done, yeah, right? Yeah, it's easier said than done. What's the, for someone who may be watching, what is the process like, or what kind of advice can you give someone to do that? What What's the process to changing, shifting from going from the negative to the positive? I mean, my advice from shifting from negative to positive is watch who you surround yourself with. Watch what your, your people do because, like I always tell my brothers, I made the mistakes. I don't want y'all to make no mistakes. So it's always a learning process. If you have somebody in front of you to learn from them, I, I would hope you would learn and not make the same mistake from them. And do you sense that you have worked hard to really sort of change the image? Because at first it had a lot more guns and things like that. In mm -hmm. our community, it just sort of seems like a way of life. And so we live by the sword, die by the sword, and it's just the way that it is. But it seems like you're trying to really say, you know, uh, that's not what I'm about, and that's not going to be any of our logos and things like that anymore. Yeah. See, I worked hard on telling all, all my individuals, don't carry guns, don't show guns, don't just be around the, the negative stuff because that's what they love. That's what the individuals love to feed into. So if you see me with a gun, you'll want a gun. You get what I'm saying? So it's just like shifting shifting them from that because they just love what's, what's bad. You know what I'm saying? So that's what it really is. What When you put that narrative out there, what kind of response do you, did you get? Do you get a response of people that are praising you, saying, I'm on board with you, or is it a different kind of response, especially when from people who are back at home? I mean, my response was always great because, like I say, everybody looked at me to make a difference. So when, when I make a difference and I say, oh, yeah, you're going to put that gun down, they, they'll know I'm serious because I give, them, I, I give it to them raw. It's like I come from the hood, so I know how to change your mentality. I know that if you want to go that way, I will tell you what's the consequences. You know what I'm saying? It's either you want, you want to go to jail, you want to die. You know what I'm saying? It's five to ten or you want to die. So it's just like, that's what I would give to them. I'd give it to them straight raw. I don't uncut. Do you sense some of this stems from the fact you essentially almost act like the father of the family? And, and I know early on, it was your dad wasn't with you all past like maybe eight or nine, that somehow being older, you're like, look, I got I to gotta be the man of the family now, and, and I'm going to step up and, and represent him and try my best to help the family as best as I can and do right. When I realized that we didn't have no figure to look up to, I had to take a stand. And I knew nobody didn't want to take that stand because it's, it's hard to be a boss. It's easy to be a worker, you know what I'm saying? So I had to take that position on, on uplifting my people. So I always had that father figure, and I know since I didn't have my father, I was always going to steer my little brothers and little sisters in the right direction. What do you do for yourself? How do you stay, what do you mentally do for yourself to stay sane? Do you have a spiritual practice? Um, or what is your daily routine like for yourself? I'm spiritually every day, so it's just like I wake up, pray. I, when I go to sleep, I pray. But it's just like the Lord tells me that I have to do good to people every day. So as I do good, that's, I don't, like I don't have to have no money. To, you don't have to have no money to do good. You get what I'm saying? So me just uplifting my people always gave me a drive. And I, I don't think about myself because I have a lot of people to feed. So I always just stayed in tune with my individuals and made sure that, nah, we're we not going to do this. We're going we gonna to do it this way. You know what I'm saying? And I just feed off myself that, yeah, like, God with me. You know what I'm saying? I know whatever I do, he going to make sure it's get done. Um, wrapping up, let's talk about the label, um, who you have on there, and what you guys are trying to do, and the level you're taking it to, because obviously everybody's got, you got mm -hmm. the attention for everybody. I mean, on my label, on Never Broke Again, we have Big B, KD, we got Young Boy, No Cap, Quando, B Way, we got Chris coming up, and we got like a few more artists that's coming. So it's just like, we can expand the NBA right now, but the main people are really all my brothers. So that's really what it is. Absolutely. Well, definitely, it's been a pleasure. I mean, you heard it from him himself. I mean, even though he calls himself an OG and he certainly talks super, super wise beyond his years, I mean, he really has felt uh, inspired to try to um, really learn that the best way is to do it the right way. And he doesn't mind being able to represent the streets and things like that, keeps it real. But by the same token, guns just really can't continue to be our way of life. We can take a life for life without even thinking about it, without realizing it. That really is our brother. And if we continue to do ourselves 
this disservice again and again and again, we'll continue to have our fathers either locked up or dead before their time. So you're hearing it from him, don't take it from me, but I certainly second his opinion and the way he's trying to change and the change he's bringing to the game. And uh, the numbers speak for themselves, so definitely really appreciate you coming Thank out. Thank you, Alice. Sure. Thank you for being here. Yeah, that's it. Amazing testimony, great story. Thank, Thank you. you.